Now, in 2017, I did a series of pickup truck reviews that were available here in the UK. Since then, people have asked if I'll do an updated version. So last year, my plan was to do exactly that. But, you know, none of us could have guessed what 2020 was going to bring. But here we are in 2021, and a lot of the manufacturers have got out new models, or at least some serious upgrades to the current model. Now in this series of tests, what I want to do is show an everyday, real world scenario, as far as the capabilities of these vehicles. So you'll see a lot of stuff online where they'll max the weights out, or they'll try to take them up the side of a mountain. And like The vast majority of these vehicles will never do that. So what I want to do is show them uh, doing work that the majority of us will do, you know, uh, carrying, you know, a decent load and towing a decent weight on a trailer. Now, some of people out there, they will use them to the capacities, but they already know what vehicle they want and they know their needs and requirements. So for this series of tests, what I'm going to do is for the load bed, have a specified weight of 800 kilograms, which we can try on every vehicle. So it's all the same. And then as far as towing goes, we've got a trailer and combined load weight of 2,750 kilos. So not completely maxed out, but still a decent test weight. So we might as well kick off for the first one. Roll the titles. Markers. So we're here today at Starton Tractors uh, because, as you'll know, Starton, the Case IH dealers. But also deal in Isuzu pickups. In fact, in 2017, I had a look at the Isuzu, uh, which at the time was a 2.5. Then they went to that 1.9, and even I was dubious. I never actually really got to try the earlier 1.9, but since then I've got my Amarok, which is a 2 litre, so not far away. And you all know what I think of that, it's just mind blowing. Let's not forget, Case with the quad track used to have a 14 litre engine, and they've now gone up in horsepower and dropped the size it always used to be about there's no replacement for displacement but with technology that's just not true anymore right dave so the lineup is starting here so we know this is the utility so, utility uh, seats seats cloth. cloth transmission all manual all manual right and as you say but it's still so, a high spec yeah you've still got those spec um so you've got four by two single four by four single extended cab four by four and double cab four by four now this has got a lot of choices where it starts, yeah. hasn't it? But for the worker, that gives brilliant, isn't it? Gives it all. From this one, then, we've got a little so bit more. We're going to go a little bit more, so we're going on to the DL20. Right. Now, the DL20 is ex is available in an extended cab and a double cab. You like that cab or a double cab, yeah? Yeah. And in the double cab, you can have manual or auto. Still got a cloth seat. Yep. Features same as this. Yep. But you've got a better quality of cloth seat. Carpets, alloy wheels, and reversing parking sensors. If you want a snazzy utility, this is your one. This is the one. So, yep. From that one, we go to, to DL40. DL40. So, the seats are leather. leather. Yep. Transmission, now you get a choice again. Manual, Manual auto. auto. Only available in a double cab. Oh, so, okay. this is more for your weekend car or your manager. Or bit of both, bit yeah, a bit, 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 bit of both. luxury. Yeah. Start to see a bit of chrome highlight on the wing mirrors, on the on the front, on the badge, and then you've got polished steel and black insert alloy, side steps. This is the first model that comes with side steps as standard. Yep. Um, and then you've got all the safety features: front and rear, rear parking sensors, reversing camera. So it's got everything that you could possibly need. Okay. V40 though, if I want to go balls out, top of the range, everything's with bells and whistles, V cross. V -cross. You've just got a gunmetal grey style. It's all graphite gunmetal, that's quite nice. And it's a little bit more subtle, I quite like that. Yeah. 
Um, wing mirrors are topped in gunmetal. Nice. You've got a solid black alloy. Yep. Gunmetal on the side steps. Yeah. Now on this model I've actually fitted some roof rails so they're, a, they're an option that you can have and I just think it finishes the truck off a little bit yeah. more. Um, biggest thing differences with this is you actually get a nine inch touch screen. Right. So when you put your Apple CarPlay or Android on, it's got on, that. It's got it's, on there, isn't it? It's, it's got oh, right. You get a, a CD DVD player. Right. Most trucks don't come with any of that no. anymore. Um, LED headlights, and they are self-leveling. So put your trailer on, and you no longer have to dip your. Oh, it does, does, does all for it. Does it all for you? Brilliant. So. I think it's not just subtle. That's a real tasteful little. I like it. I really do like the finish on this. Actually, yeah. So, it's under the old hood there, under the bonnet. Uh, things are very accessible. Yeah. Because normally, you just see a big sheet of plastic and that's it, it's all you can see. Um, but this, for a modern vehicle, is surprisingly accessible. I mean, all right, you've got all your stuff so you can top up your fluids and what and check that. That's all good. Um, but you actually have got room to work. There's sensors there, right, you could change that out. You've got stuff like here, uh, clips and hoses, you can get to them. You can check your belts, you can actually see all that down there. Battery, easy enough to get to. Everything else, to I'm actually surprised actually that how much access you do have for a modern vehicle. Hill descent control, front heated seat covers, and this little button, which is new to the Isuzu, is a rear differential lock that's available in the DL20, DL40, and the V Cross models and works when you're in 4L. Now, obviously, it's still switch on the fly from 2 to 4 and back to 2, up to 60 mile an hour and no more than 60 mile an hour. Um, obviously, if you need to be in low, you'll be stationary in neutral or park to engage the low box. Four-wheel drive system, as you can see, I've put it back into two, but not moved, so it will go in and out of that. Um, and it will just show you which one you're in. And as you can see, I've locked the diff, and it's giving you there's a little X on the diff, and, and that, so all of those, all those features are in there. And it is literally a switch and it is as quick as it changed to put it from two to four and back to two showing you back to the stereo as you can see now i've um put the vehicle in in position to drive it right enough of all that old salesman stuff send it so we're going to stick a benchmark on this and what we're going to do is use this triaxle i for williams and a little ton and a half Kubota, all right? So yes, you can tow more, you could tow less, you could a bigger trailer, smaller trailer, whatever, I know all that, but this will be our benchmark, and we'll use this trailer and this load on every truck that we try. Right, so, we've got the little Kubota on the back, as I said, ton and a half plus the trailer, um, so we're, you know, all up, we're over two ton. Um, yeah, let's see what it does. So one of the, problems that people have said that since I looked at the Isuzu in 2017 uh, which had the 2.5 diesel and they went to the 1.9 and this is a 1.9 but people said oh it's just totally different vehicle it wasn't as good didn't as much gold didn't as much power and you can kind of see it 1.9 2.5 um, that doesn't surprise me but is it really that bad I don't know. I never tried that 1.9 model. This is a completely new truck with a completely different setup, as in transmission and engine. Meaning that Isuzu have listened to the people that were saying it hasn't got enough power, hasn't got enough torque and get up and go. And they've done a complete remap. And they've made this engine work with this transmission. Now this is a six speed automatic and you can get in some of the other models a six-speed manual and I have to say they seem to have done something very very good and done it very well yeah this really does just go 
and it's just climbing. The changes are smooth. Now I know a lot of people will turn around and go, oh yeah, but you don't want an automatic for towing. What is this, 1983? You know, we have gone beyond the days of the old three-speed Chrysler Torque Flight, you know, transmission and so, you know, the old Range Rovers and stuff like that. Those old transmissions were bad. The gaps in between change, and you had to rev it. This is a six-speed. Guess what? The manual is a six-speed. So at least with the auto, you've got the choice of comfortable driving, or you can bang it over, you can drive it like a manual. So, there we are now. I can change down change down again if I want to I can hold it in the gear now it will change up automatically but I'm holding it in my gear I want to give it a nudge changes up I'm gonna hold it again because now it would change up as an auto give it a nudge come down again I can drive it like a manual so There's always this whole thing, as I say, people sort of say, oh, I know, but I do a lot of tow and I need a manual. Why would you have a manual? But I know some people like to have a manual gear on. That's fair enough. And the nice thing about the Isuzu's is that in some of the other lower down, like the utility and, and I think the D20, you've got the choice of a manual transmission. So what I've done is I've swapped over and I've let old Wiggy drive just to see a different viewpoint. Because you've got an L200 and it's a bushy. Yeah. Well, um, I'm impressed with it. It actually goes a lot better than what I thought for the size of the engine. And um, yeah, to be fair, you wouldn't really know there's a trailer on the back. The road ain't the greatest, but yeah, it is really nice. See, so, yeah, that's six speed auto. And then you, you can shift it across there and then nudge it manually, like a power shift almost. I am really amazed with You that. like this, don't you? Yeah, I do like it. Yeah, I wouldn't, um, yeah, I might look at getting one. It's, um, <laughs> I'm really impressed with it. I would, yeah, I didn't think it was going to be as good as this, but, yeah, mine, I'd be bouncing out of the seat by now down here, but, yeah. Right, so, on to the payload test, and we're going to do the same payload, the exact same thing we're going to use for every vehicle that we test. What we've done was cut down an IBC container, and we've actually weighed... Uh, 800 kilograms so you know it's a decent weight in between half a ton and a ton so it gives you a good variation there of what you might put in the back of one of these as I said most of the while what are you gonna have in the back a couple of drums of fuel toolbox that's it so most of the while you wouldn't have anything like this but here we are we have got 800 kilograms of wet sand in here we'll use as I said the same weight for all the trucks we test um, Right, well, let's see what it's like on the road. Right, so there we are. The bed is loaded with uh, 800 kilos of sand. Uh, standing start, take off, see what it does again. Forty mile an hour, quick as that. I mean, What what more can I say? As I said, I, I never drove the earlier 1.9 Isuzu, all right? I never drove one, um, but I did drive the 2.5. I drove a few of those. This has got more get up and go than those. So whatever they've done to work the magic between the transmission and the engine has worked. Um, low down grunt is brilliant the kick down works in the auto really well the changes are smooth this is what I'm saying I think this is where um, maybe the auto really is in harmony with this engine would the manual be the same yeah probably but I just think this is these two really do work together. This transmission, as I said, the nice thing is that you can use it like a manual if you want to. Right, on the main road, foot down, 30, 40, 50, 60, 
800 kilos in the back. Quick as that. Honestly, if if I was told this had a two and a half litre engine, three litre engine even, uh, that, that wouldn't surprise me of how it performs when it's loaded. You know, it actually seems to pull better when loaded. It actually enjoys a load, it seems. It really does, you know, flex itself and just go for it. Again, modern, you know, engineering and whatever, that's possibly how it's how it's wired basically so it does do that it recognizes that it needs to give it the go and it does but having driven the 2.5 and then driven this whatever there was as an issue that people thought they've obviously addressed it because i would have this over a 2.5 isuzu without a shadow of a doubt just because the engine sounds crisper you know the noise levels are down the truck is just so much nicer, you know. I mean, you're talking, what we talk now, probably four years down the line from the old last of the 2.5s, probably. Um, just a really nice place to be. It looks nice. The truck looks fantastic from outside. Um, and as far as the towing, the weight carrying capability goes, what's not to like? So there we are. Uh, what did I actually think of the Isuzu overall? I really liked it. But like with all these vehicles we're gonna be testing, it's just what I think of them and how I see them. You might think something different once you have tried one, but that's the point. If you're in the market for a pickup truck, like I always say to you, don't just be, you know get really closed on one vehicle and know it, don't wanna look at anything else. Go and try them all. You might be surprised, but that again is down to you and that's when you start hammering that deal out if you like it. It's down to price, dealer backup, and the vehicle itself. But yeah, to kick off this year, 2021, with our pickup review, the Isuzu, that set the bar very, very high. Now, these are all four-wheel drive vehicles that we'll be testing. Uh, so they do obviously have an off-road capability, but we're not going to put that to the test in this series um, of trials because it's absolutely pointless. They all come standard on road tyres. And you know as well as I do, if you put a decent set of off-road tyres on, they'll go most places that you want them to go. I mean, let's face it, if you put uh, a decent set of knobbly tyres on a family saloon, it'll go further than your average car. So we're not gonna be testing that because as I said, I'm sure most of you got the experience off-road to know what tires you need for your type of work. However, in the future, what I do want to do is take a pickup truck on road tires around an off-road course and just see where it goes and what it fails at and then put that same vehicle on a decent set of off-road tires and wheels and then just see the difference. So you can keep up to date with everything else that we're doing during the week uh, on Instagram. And I'm putting photos and videos up there uh, to keep you updated. And uh, yeah, so until the next one, do well. Did you think I forgot you? Is it that time again? Better go home, then we?